Okay, okay, good people. Uh, Karibu, uh, Sana, everybody who is uh, here with me today. Um, again, uh, I think it will be remiss, just for the record, to say that uh, we are grateful to God. We've come through an election uh, a period, the electioneering period that started a couple of months back, gained momentum and uh, finally crescendoed or uh, climaxed, you know, um, with the election of last week on Tuesday. And uh, truth be told, uh, this has been probably one of the better elections in terms of um, we haven't seen the uh, the call of the political. We haven't we haven't seen the the loud and very aggressive and sometimes brutal kind of uh, electioneering which uh, this country is famous for. Well, we've had it a little easy. People have gone voted peacefully, and uh, everything has moved um, far much better. You know, outside of just one or two incidences, I think um, we are at a good place as a country. We must, um, we must say. And I think also we might. It's also good for me to say this. Um, let's credit the church because we are church people. I think uh, those of us who have our ear on the ground, we know that the church has been praying quite, 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 uh, you know, strongly for this. Um, you know, um, you know elections and i know so many groups which have been fasting and people have been praying chain fast prayer i was told today by somebody somewhere in okambani you know people who are fasting you know in a big 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 way just to ask god for peace and um, and a peaceful transition and everything else so uh, we, we, we 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 must acknowledge that god's people have also realized that um you you um you can't go wrong with prayer you can't go wrong with prayer. You know, asking God to intervene, asking God to, inviting God into the, all of this, um, it's the way to go. And it's the way to go, not only in this election, it's the way to go in every other situation that is beyond us, you know. And, and that's why we are believers, because um, we acknowledge that our strength is small, okay. And um, I've, I've listened to a lot of people talking. I was talking to somebody yesterday who told me about um, people who had been fasting, I think, for 40 days up to the date of the election. And this has been going on for many, 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 many people. Uh, I think I was engaged in one just, just a little bit. But people have been praying, you know, just seeking God for peace and, you know, and everything to work out um, as it should. Um, so I don't have my exact figures, and I'm not so sure I have the exact figure. I don't have the exact figure, maybe be more uh, clear. Um, but there were some huge uh, number of people who were, um, you know, seeking elective posts, um, either from 16,000, 14,000, some, some figures of that, of that nature. And uh, only a fraction of those people, uh, a very small percentage, was going to actually you know, because, the, you know, the seats are few, are going to actually mount those, um, you know, positions. Saying that, I'm trying to, um, um, I'm bringing out one issue, that a lot of people are dealing presently with loss, okay? And um, loss is always a very painful experience. So what I want to do today, and I will be saying a lot of these things on top of my head, um, how to deal with loss at whatever level, at whatever level. So I think somebody wrote a book or did some articles some years ago, and it's become a very famous uh, a piece, you know, a reference piece on uh, the five stages of mourning. And here mourning, you need to look at it in terms of loss because you know, you've lost somebody. And um, it's also been used to address things like even divorce because that's also a loss. A loss of a dream, as a loss of something that you built in your mind that you wanted or you felt that um, you know you are reaching out to, and um, they say that it works across board every loss. So if my uh, memory serves me right, I think the initial stage had denial, then there was anger, then there was bargaining, then there was um, uh, depression, then there was acceptance. And I've always thought about that, you know, and, and I think I told my wife the same thing not too long ago when, um, you know, we saw some of the things that were happening. And you could see clearly that, um, you know, people had people had invested, people, people, people had invested heavily um, 
emotionally, people are invested financially, and every in every way. And so obviously, when something like this happens, you know, it tends to affect uh, someone very, very heavily. We've all lost. I mean, I want, I want to assume all of us at some at some point or another, you lose a business, you know, deal, or you lose a job, or you, so you lose somebody uh, in terms of death. I mean, we, we've all lost. And uh, sometimes you feel at sea, you know, like the Englishman would say, you feel lost at sea. You feel like um, you, 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 let, how, what, what's a better word to use? You, It hits you on the blind side. I think because we all expect to win. And so sometimes some of these losses, you know, they hit you on the blind side. I was watching some, uh, you know, boxing match, uh, you know, earlier today. And this, inter, you know, this, this commentator, you know, the pundit was saying that, um, the the, the 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 blow that hurts most is the one you don't see you know so the blow that takes you out you know is the one you don't see and 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 sometimes and that's common with life let's put it that way that sometimes uh, things happen when we least expect and we are blindsided you know and before you know it you're sprawling on the floor you know and you uh, you don't even know where you are anymore and you are completely disoriented and you're completely um, uh, um, um, you know, it's 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 a terrible thing. Let's let's just put it that way. You know, hits you between the eye. It's a what the Englishman would call a thunderbolt from a clear sky. You never saw it coming. And a lot of people um, believed, you know, um, believed believe believed their hype. You, you get what I'm saying? Um, I know a couple of people, not many who tried to stand for elective post, okay? Some some of them close family people. And uh, everybody else can see you're not winning. Everybody else can see, you know, that something is really not, I mean, we, the rest of us can see that um, it's, there's no gravitas. There is nothing, there's no traction on the ground. And But for some reason, these guys completely are, you know, they are so full of it's, it's so full of hope i don't know if it's hope or it's something that is near an infatuation you know like they fall in love and they really can't see anything else you know happening around and about you know the whole of that issue it's like they're so crowded by this hype that people tell them and maybe even they tell themselves to the extent that um, somebody just goes right into some ditch and uh, you know, they're surprised that it went the way it did, yet everybody else seems to be like, I mean, you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell that, you know, you are really not connecting and stuff like that. Yeah, but it does happen to all of us. Sometimes we get into a business, you know, those of us who are who have done business, and we are so sure of the results. We're so sure we're going to come out of this thing better, you know, I mean, the better or, you know, the more moneyed or, or, and, and all that. And then, um, you know, the thing just literally wipes out our account and our our, our, our finances and everybody else is saying, couldn't you see, you know, didn't you read the time, you know, the signs and stuff. But then we really believed it was going to work. And these things do happen to all of us. And if they haven't happened, let me put it this way for the record, it will happen. It is, it is life. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. It's just the way it is. Okay. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, so what to do when we lose? Okay, what to do what we, when we lose. So I picked something just before I came in because I was thinking about what I was going to share today. And uh, I must confess that this I picked from one of my favorite author and commentator on all manner of issues, and especially psychological issues, Dr. Phil. He wrote a wonderful book called Life Secrets, those of you who follow Dr. Phil. And, and, and my brother was kind enough when he was in the UK those many years ago you know, I asked him to get another book for me because it was not available here. And uh, I've had the book and it's a fantastic book. So I pick a couple of things, you know, and this 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 is a long time ago. That is, this is almost, uh, this is, uh, these are notes of uh, 2009, January 24th. Okay. So this, 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 this uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, book. And I pick a couple of things just as part of my notes. I scribble a lot of things and sometimes I let her own go and type them out. And um, he had a chapter there where he talked about um, you create your own experience. Let me tell you why this became interesting for me, because initially I did agree. You know, the way you read a chapter, you know, the title of a chapter, and you're like, no, you know, there's always a devil out there. There's always factors outside of your 
um, um, control, it, it, it is ETC. So I thought I, I thought it was a very um, um, uh, uh, the title. Just just looking at the title, I thought it was very um, strong. I mean, it was like he, he could have toned it down, you know, a little bit. But when I read, I thought. No, this man is making a lot of sense. Of course, he, he, he agreed in the other chapters that, you know, clearly, um, you know, there are other factors beyond and above what you are able to control. But there's something he said about creating your own experience, which I would like to just uh, run through it, and then we can just have a little bit, you know, of our own personal um, engagement with this, this material. So um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the sower may mistake and sow his peas crookedly. The peas make no mistake, but come up and show his life. Okay? So the sower may mistake and sow his peas crookedly, but the peas, okay? Okay. The maize, seed, more easier, will not make the mistake they will come up and they will show his life, okay? So when you're planting beans, you may, you know, so crookedly. But the bean seed that has been planted will not make that mistake, no? It won't align itself. So just show. And there's something he said that he said, accept and acknowledge accountability for your life. You know, this uh, is what I may call, in plain English, they call it um, hard-nosed approach to issues. Bottom line approach to issues. It's, 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 it's being tough on yourself. It's that thing of, um, let's look at this thing square, I mean, clear. Um, removing the, the, not being emotional about it. Understand your role in creating the results that are your life. Understand your role in creating the results that are your life. And I, and, 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 and I want to believe that he is trying so hard to say that a lot of people who fail, or most, most, most of us who sometimes find ourselves in failure, uh, we need to begin taking responsibility and I'll put it, put, put it this way, and I, I can't remember who said this, it could be Maxwell or one of those people who I follow very closely. He said, a man has not failed until he blames somebody else for that failure, okay? As long as you are taking responsibility, there is opportunity there, or rather there is a space for improvement, growth, and success in the future. But if it is somebody's else's fault, there is no learning and there is no growth. Okay. Whatever your life circumstances, you are accountable. And listen to this point, which I find very interesting. He says, even if you think there can't be a possible link between your problem and yourself, and I like this, he said, assume, and you know, he's speaking now directly on the first person, that I am right. And keep digging for your role in the problem. It is there, he says, I promise you, trust me. Now, it's a very presumptuous statement, but it's a beautiful statement. He says, even if you think, even if you think, say, for example, somebody lost in the election, and people lost, my friend. I mean, we are talking of probably, uh, what, 90-something percent lost, because the numbers were big, those who are seeking post. And the and the, and the post for few. Uh, just, just keep digging because it's human nature to want to blame somebody else. It's human nature not to want to implicate yourself. It's human nature to want to kind of clean yourself and, uh, and, and, and um, you know, again, like I said, believe in your own hype. It's human nature to look for excuses and, um, and all that and all that. And sometimes we go out of our, of our way to just try to not see. I don't know how to put this. We try so hard that we don't, we don't face the reality that we actually do. I mean, how many people do you know? I mean, and there are a couple of people here that I know because I'm, I'm in an area where people 
you know, kind of know each other quite a bit. You know, this is a small place, the village, actually for the MCAs here. Uh, you, you know a number of them. And you could tell, you could tell that um, really they were not connecting. And um, But whenever you met with them, and some of them know me personally, and they, they, they were so invested. And I'm thinking, I mean, are you the only stranger around here? Because honestly, people are not feeling your vibe. You know, people are not feeling you, you know. And, um, you know, some maybe because of certain things which, you know, could be in the public or whatever, you know, and, 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 and all that. But these guys just went on headlong into this, into this thing. Okay. So one of the biggest challenge is this challenge of keep digging. Okay. Assume that this author, because I'm picking this from, you know, Dr. Phil, and, and, and he's a believable person. He's, 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 he's uh, and his stripes, if you can put it that way. Um, he says, keep checking, keep checking, keep checking, keep checking. Even when we finally do a proper post-mortem, why the winner? And I've seen a number of them online. You know, the president-elect. I mean, everybody is saying nearly the same thing. They're saying, look, this, 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 this man seemed to have outworked, you know, his competitors. This man seemed to have out, out thought. Um, he seemed to have messaged better. He seemed to have presented a more amiable, friendly, you know, and, and all that. And it's, and it's almost everybody who is speaking is saying the same thing. And he's saying, look, I mean, it's out there. You know, sometimes they say, if you want to hide something, you hide it in plain sight and people, you know, don't see it. You know, some, sometimes it's it's there. You, you see it clearly. I spoke to somebody who, you know, today who ended, ended up voting for the president-elect, and he said that uh, he made that decision, up, you know, the last, you know, couple of days too. And uh, it's it's one of those things that you know tended to move people in his direction quite 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 strongly. My my point again here is. Um, We need to acknowledge that we are responsible and accountable for stuff, okay? When we always look for something out there as our first port of call, you know, like the, the first thing that comes to my mind when I go through a situation of loss or something went wrong, I think it's somebody else, it's the devil, it's da -da 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 -da. people don't grow like that. People don't improve like that. I think it's just good to simply say what went wrong where, okay? Okay. Resisting this law, he says, or denying this law keeps you stuck in the realm of fantasy. By convincing yourself to be a victim, you make no progress, no healing, no victory. And you'll experience a victim mentality. So uh, the gentleman who became our, our MCA here is a very good friend. Actually, some of you, you know, so those people who have known me for a long time, he used to come for my meetings way back as a very young guy. So my wife knows, you know, my wife is here, knows the guy very well. He he is a guy who is um, I've known him, I've taught him, I've preached to him. We are friends. We've met many times. We've met many times this time around the election period. The last election, I, oh, I was involved in, the, you know, even prayer and stuff like that. And um, he didn't do well last time. I mean, he didn't do well at all, at all, at all last time. And I want to believe that um, he took a hard-nosed approach to what went wrong and how to correct it. And I could tell. You know, even this time, I, I could tell this guy is coming. I mean, I could tell he's coming through. Something somewhere changed. But, you know, you could have sat there and said, oh, oh, these people don't know what they have lost. You know, um, the best thing that happened in this side of uh, the Sahara. Uh, you, know, you know, there are people who, you know, have a, you know, inflated sense of self-importance. And they think, you know, it's your loss. You know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's your loss. He, he went back and he says, how come I didn't connect with the market people well? How come I didn't connect with the youth well? You know, what? and I was in the right, you know, political arm and stuff like that. You know, and um, he's been able to rebuild himself until to the point whereby it, it was extremely easy for him this time around, okay? So what you may call self-evaluation, 
a hard-nosed self-evaluation. Emotions aside, let's even say a marriage went down. Let's even say a business went down. Okay? Uh, let's even say a, a ministry went down. Just a hard-nosed approach and simply say, let me be honest to myself for once. Because sometimes most of us live our entire life. There are people who live their entire life to be very honest, you know, just deceiving themselves. Believe in their own hype. Somebody takes a pen and paper and simply say, I'm going to be brutally honest with me. What did I do wrong? Did, did, I, did I think or did I carry with me this entitlement? Because how many guys do you know, even in this election, felt it's a done deal? Did I, did I put in the work? Whatever it is, hard nosed, um, uh, dispassionate outlook. And I believe that's a way to live life. Okay. Either you're looking at a marriage or a business or ministry or whatever it is, simply say, hey, this is it. I mean, this is it. So uh, I put a couple, a couple of things here and I would like to go through them. But let me first of all say this uh, from uh, the, the book. If you truly want change and you truly acknowledge that you create your own experience, then you must analyze what you've done or haven't done to create the undesirable result. And uh, these are the questions, and I put a couple here. Many of them, so some, you know, a good number of them I've added, um, you know, you know, for myself. Um, so number one, what is the life circumstance that I do not like? So that's a first place to start. Okay. What is it about me presently now that I don't like? Okay. So say I'm a preacher and I don't like the fact that maybe I stammer, for example. Uh, or maybe I don't like the idea that I come out uh, not as believable. Whatever it is. Okay. Uh, it could be a feedback that has come back to me or it could be something which I, you know, inherently know about myself, you know. And so I said, this is something I don't like. Maybe my diction is not, you know, you know, large enough, or maybe um, my stage presence, it does not command the kind of attention or rivet people's attention, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, okay? What is the life circumstance that I do not like? And I think that's a fundamental question for all of us, you know, where we can take pen and paper and simply say, I don't like the fact that um, I, you know, I postpone things too much. I prevaricate a lot. I... I, I change my position quite a lot. I'm very, um, you know, ambiguous when I'm saying things which I need to be very, you know, um, strong about. And I don't come out as, um, 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 as, as clear because I try to win both ends. And sometimes I try to, comp I end up compromising, you know, my position. Is it? So whatever it is, whatever it is that you, you, you don't like about yourself, maybe it's the way you do business, maybe you're unable to pitch for yourself, you don't know how to really pitch for yourself and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm the best here, you know, and, and, and without having to feel some type of way that um, you are, you know, um, um, bragging or whatever it is. Whatever it is, what is the life circumstance you, do, you don't like? Maybe you talk too much, maybe you talk too little. Um, Whatever the case, um, um, you give you give in easily, you know, you give in very very easily. You don't you don't you don't fight hard long enough, you know, for things which matter, you know, you know to you. Whatever the case, whatever the case, okay. So at a very basic level, I think that one needs to be answered. Then number two, what did I do to arrange the situation so that it happened in the way it did? Again, we said earlier, and these are my own words, this is a bottom line, hard-nosed outlook to life. It's not, um, you know, you know, just playing, you know, little games here. It's a, it's a bottom line. So that, uh, say, for example, the party that loses, okay, you know, ultimately there will be a winner who will be, you know, you know declared. Um, the party that loses does this post-mortem, you know, you know, and they open up the thing and, and, and they simply say, what did I do to arrange the situation so that it happened in the way it did? What did I do? What did I do? How did I do it? And this, this should be consistent across board in life. In life. Three, what did I do to make the results 
possible. I accept that I am the one who did it. So what was it? What did I do to make the results possible? I accept that I am the one who did it. So what was it that I did? Again, I'm saying away from the politics, okay? We're just taking advantage that that is a very, it's, it's a present thing right now. So it's easy to relate, but I want you to see it in every way. Say a marriage has had issues, a business has had issues and we've had issues in every sort. For example, I mean, sometimes even uh, our own physical health, okay? To our own physical. I met a gentleman who has been a very good friend of mine for a very long time. I haven't seen him for a while. And uh, we we're having our haircut. There's a particular place we normally go. And uh, we we're having a conversation and we we're having our haircut. And he was telling me, because you're almost age, and he was saying, Hey, look, man, I mean, I, I I I I found myself with these one, two, three things happening in my body. Okay. You know, you have a bit of heightened pressure, a bit of sugar, you know, bottom, you know, you know, you know, on, on the border, sugar issues. You know, it can escalate and become worse. And uh, he just decided, ah, ah, I need to change this thing. I mean, I'm too young for this. I'm too young to start thinking of uh, becoming an invalid and uh, dependent on drugs for the rest of my life. And he's almost my age and uh, he's really toned down. In actual fact, we stayed for a very long time and I couldn't recognize him, you know, because I've known him as a very heavy set, heavy set person, you know, and all that. And, uh, you know, he had really slam quite significantly it is actually after he spoke to the barber that i realized it was him and then i said and i could and then he says look man I, I i took a serious program i joined a gym and we've been there with my wife and we do all sorts of things and um, i was very happy for him because he actually looks you know pretty trimmed down and looking very very good and he said look my health is really you know made uh, some good progress as a result okay uh number what is it for did i trust foolishly because that's something which we do. Um, there's something I was saying in church not too long ago. I was saying trust is good. Um, but but trust is good, but blind trust is, 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 is wrong. I mean, um, you don't want to follow a person blindly. Loyalty is good, but blind loyalty is bad. Did you, did you get it? Eh? Um, did I trust Foolishly. In other words, did I, when, 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 when people came my way, when I had partners or relations who came my way and I had to work with them, or whatever it is that I did with them, you know, did I allow, you know, myself to be taken over and carried away by nice high sounding statements that I did not interrogate people and what they were saying and the veracity of what they were, and, 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 and the truthfulness. Did I counter check? Did I fact check? Did I ask somebody else? Because sometimes, like I said earlier, when you want to hide something, the Englishmen say, hide it in plain sight. People don't see it because it's just there. You know, it's just there. You know, and uh, sometimes, you know, we, 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 we trust because somebody said they are a Christian. It's that simple. Somebody, um, and we've all fallen victim, let me be honest. You know, somebody says they are a bishop. Somebody says that they are born again, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then um, we open up our past very quickly, open up our wallets very quickly, you know. And then in the, in the process of time, we realize that um, we trusted foolishly. I think it's good to assume that um, every person has the capacity within them even if you haven't seen it, assume that people have the capacity to be wrong and to be evil at times, okay? And so that um, you, 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 you will trust to the point where people have opened up. And if they change, you are going to quickly notice they have changed and they're going to say, excuse me, I think we've been moving on, okay? And I'm seeing a new behavior, I'm seeing a new pattern and I'm not comfortable with this because my money is involved, my life is involved, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, please make me, uh, um, uh, uh, prove me wrong. I mean, I don't think I can move with you beyond this point because I think the patterns are not uh, quite um, you know, encouraging. That's 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 a good way to look at things. That's a good way to look at things. Okay. So again, um, uh, did I trust foolishly? Did I miss important warning signs? Again, it's something which I've been saying, you know, all along. Uh, people fall in love, they're in infatuation. People come and tell them, hey, this guy has had another relationship, or this woman has had, a, you know, whatever. And um, ooh, they are so, you know, head. They call it what? Head over heels in love. You know, there's the one they use. You know, they, they're completely taken over. 
You could be taken one day. They are not really thinking straight. And sometimes it is at those points when you really need to be very sober, you know, that you don't make decisions when you are so emotionally um, 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 uh, engaged. Okay. Okay. That's why sometimes it's just good to delay a decision, any decision. Okay. You're buying a car or you, you're buying a house. You, you, you delay the decision just to relook at this thing from a more um, neutral, I don't want to call it, maybe a more neutral point of view, or maybe even allow a new set of eyes to look at it for you. You know, you bring in somebody, you say, hey, Pasi, come and look at this thing for me. I mean, um, I, 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 I know a friend who bought a car and I remember I'd been telling him, you know, wait and stuff like that. And he didn't have a lot of money. And, uh, you know, I told him, you know, for you to get a good car when you have, uh, you know, this kind of budget, you know, you really need to take your time, really take your time so that uh, you can get as good as is possible with this kind of money. And uh, he met somebody who I believe, I believe he had a silver tongue, you know, in terms of um, convincing him. And he bought this car, which was really, really, really pathetic. And so he called me and he told me to come and see the car. It was a small car. And uh, I mean, from afar, because when I was coming, I could see where the car was parked. I mean, I, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Not that model. You know, and and when I, when, of course, when I came close, I realized it was that model, which is not a very good brand. And it is prone to a lot of breakages and the parts are unavailable. And uh, it's just generally a very bad. And then it was not only just a bad brand in terms of model. It was in terrible shape. So eventually, and uh, my wife may know who I'm talking about, eventually, I think he ended up selling the car at a throwaway. I mean, very, very, very little money. Because of course it wasn't moving and it wasn't, it, it really couldn't finish any trip. Any, any, you start from here to wherever it will be told at some point. Okay. So did I miss important warning signs? Did I fail to be clear about what I wanted? Sometimes it's an issue of clarity where we, we restate, you know, if it's me talking to Wiki here on an issue, which is important to me, I say, uh, Wiki, I just told you something and I, just want to restate what I said so that I, we are clear. We are clear. I am not able to do one, two, two three, but I'm able to, to do three, four, five. Is that okay? Do you understand me? So that um, we don't clash somewhere. Okay. Uh, clarity, you know, just being able to, you know, you know, step back a bit and, uh, you know, in a, in a way that is and can be understood, you restate your facts very you know, um, uh, strongly and in a way that uh, the person will, will be able to understand and appreciate. Because sometimes people assume, you know, we say things, you know, which we didn't actually say, you know, and uh, we just assume people understand. And then you hear people th say things like, uh, yeah, but the signs were there, but I was trying to communicate. I thought it was rather obvious. It's, that's not a good way, you know, to go about things. Did I con myself because I wanted it to be true? And I think that is very, very important. Sometimes we really, um, uh, what's the word? We want something to be true so much that we end up conning ourselves. We want something to be so true. Let me give you a good example. How many times have you met somebody maybe who has lost uh, a loved one? And they're in that place, which I was talking about, the first step of denial. And they are willing to just go on a limp. I mean, just to convince themselves it is not. And it is, and it is, and it is what it is. It is what it is. So did I con myself because I wanted it to be true? Um, did I fail to, to be clear on what I wanted? That's what we said. What choices did I make that directly led to the result I did not want? Did I choose the wrong person or the wrong place? So it's a business or whatever it is. Okay. Did I choose the wrong time? What did I fail to do that directly created the result I did not want? Did I fail to take needed action? If so, what was it? What was it? Did I fail to stand up for myself and claim my rights? So we don't like something about our lives. People don't treat us correctly. People disrespect us. But the question is this, did, did we fail to stand up for ourselves and claim our rights? Okay, 
let, 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 let me tell you something about myself, and I think this one, many people who know me would agree. I, I, I have a very strong sense of my personal space. Um, it's very sacred and very sacrosanct. I'm also almost hypersensitive to um, di disrespect. And when somebody is behaving in an uncivil way in my life, I, I, people, people tell me, oh, you are so, you know, so sensitive. And, and, you know, my wife tells me that a lot and she's here. And, and I tell her, I don't know why I have a very strong sense of personal justice a very strong sense of I need to be treated right, okay? And sometimes I notice that other people just let people run all over them, say things, you know. Um, if somebody says something in a restaurant, you know, and, and, and I'm, I, I, I'm eating there, and maybe I, I ask something, maybe I say, you know, what about this, what about the other, and they fail to, you know, do the right thing, I tell them, I'm not, I won't come here again. You know, and, and, and I... And, and, you know, it, it looks petty, but I've come to realize it's a good thing because I realize that uh, I I believe in my personal justice very, very, very strongly. There are people who are like that, who, who don't like being mistreated, who don't like even if maybe somebody asks you to do something, you know, and then they come and they, you know, kind of raise the bar or, or whatever it is and, you know, and you realize that, um, you know, there's no winning with them, you know. So many times people say things like... Um, um, you lash out very quickly. You make your decisions, which are relational, very, very quickly. Um, initially, I used to feel a bit some type of way because how come I take these matters so personally? And then I realized it's just me. We are all very different. Uh, my, I have a very strong sense of justice, you know, just a very strong sense of justice. Uh, probably in another life, I'd probably be an NGO uh, on human rights. I, 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 I hate seeing people being you know, you know, uh, downtrodden and stuff like that. And clearly, I also don't like it happening to me. Um, and I believe there's something beautiful about, you know, marking your own personal sovereignty, just marking your boundaries clearly. You know, mark your boundaries clearly, you know, and simply say, hey, look, my wife is a no-no, you know, uh, my children are no-no. This, uh, fight me, let's do whatever we do, you know, but uh, we have to have this code. Our fight does not degenerate to children. Our fight never degenerates to our our wives or our mothers, for that matter. You know, it, it's 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 one of those things which I believe helps you and helps those around you kind of know the touchstones that they should not, uh, you know, you know, you know, the, the spaces that they need to operate, you know, within, so that um they 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 don't cross you the wrong way because we all are different and we want uh, to feel okay within our own skin. Okay, so did I fail to ask? For what I wanted, and that has happened a lot to people in business, and, and and sometimes even in relationships. You know, you don't ask for what you wanted in a relationship. In a relationship, we don't ask for what you wanted. We became everything to everybody apart from ourselves. I, I, I don't know if I'm making sense. You know, we became everything to everybody. We outperformed, outdid ourselves to make everybody happy, make everybody satisfied, and then we ended up being the one holding the short end of the stick. No, 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 no. I think we need to come up with a, a much more fairer, okay, um, approach, okay? Uh, and this one, I put it here pass, you know, deliberately. Did I fail to tell someone to go jump in the lake? And you know, that's an idiom for get lost. I mean, did I just fail to tell somebody? I mean, just get lost. Truth is, we're not on the same path and... Um, I don't think you are the person that I want to be around. And yeah, you know, that's it. Because sometimes, because let me put it this way, not everybody you start with, you'll end with. I'm not saying you become nasty and, uh, and aggressive and ill-tempered and, you know, very shouty on people. No, 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 I'm simply saying there are people who don't value you. There you value yourself. There are people who break your boundaries willy-nilly, anyhow, with the way they want. There are people who don't value the things which matter to you, like your faith. 
like your faith. Somebody doesn't value my faith. I don't care you're the best fundi. And I've had a fundi here, you know, you know this, 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 this house. I've had a fundi, very good fundi. But the moment somebody starts speaking stuff about faith and Christianity, yeah. I say, I say to them, you know, you either shut up or you don't come and walk around here. Plain and simple. It's, it's, there's no two way about it. We, we, matters of faith to me are not negotiable. Faith to me is sacred, is divine. It's no, I mean, I, I lack words. Faith is the heart and the core of my being. I don't care you are the one who. Oh, I don't care. I don't. I, I don't care. I don't care. You are cooking fat. We will boil food. I will, I will not. I will, I will not need it. You, you get. I mean, faith is everything to me. You know. And, and, and sometimes people say things like, uh, no, 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 you know, j j just understand that. I said, there are things which you don't negotiate about, you know, because they are the core of your being, you know, you know, you know. So did I fail to tell someone, go jump in the lake and one, just get lost. Just get lost. I mean, you, you'd be better for somebody else, but not me. Okay. Did I fail to treat myself with dignity and respect? What action do I need to take in order to change? And I think this is where you begin to kind of flip. After checking all the things I did wrong and I didn't do right and stuff like that, uh, or things I did, you know, committed, and things which I didn't do, which I omitted, then this is where you start flipping this thing. What action do I need to take in order to change? Again, remember what we said. This is a dispassionate self-evaluation, you know, plan. Okay? This is a dispassionate, remove all the you know, emotional thing about it. And, simply, and I'm just using this uh, election period and the losses and the pains and the hearts and the, you know, to simply say in life, we will, will, will have losses and we will need to be very dispassionate when we do self-evaluation because people need to self-evaluate, okay? What action do I need to take in order to change? So I realized, for example, that uh, I'm not, um, you know, my my physical body is, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy, I get tired very quickly, I'm borderline, you know, sickly and, you know, and stuff like that. So I know clearly I need to start doing something about my body. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's that simple. Okay. So I get up in the morning and uh, skip. No, I remember the first time I joined a gym, I felt very foolish. I'll be very honest with you. I, I, I was, you know, those people, you know, those, 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 those times when you feel like um, gym, it is, I'm going to the gym and blah, blah, blah. You buy your kit, you, you know, you got the right shoes, you got the right, uh, you know, track, and then you go there. And uh, so I was paying then, you know, it was very cheap then. I was paying 200 shillings per session. And then I think there was a registration for a couple of thousand and stuff. And, um, uh, the guy day one looked at me. Of course, I was extremely unfit. I mean, he looked at me looking all flabby and, you know, and you know, completely unfit. And he gave me a rope and he told me to spend my one hour skipping. And initially, I hadn't thought about it. You know, so I was skipping, then I was just skipping, and then I'll get tired, then I'll skip and drink some water and skip. And then I asked myself the question I'm paying 200 bob to skip. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, how many ropes do I have here? I mean, I have better environment. That the, the gym was so crammed and so squeezed. We were many, it was smelly. I live in a big space here. I have a lot of areas I can even run around here. I thought, I mean, I'm just paying 200 shilling to skip. And uh, trust you me, that was the end of that uh, gym thing. I just came and I skipped here, okay? So what action do I need to take in order to change? Do I need to start, do I need to start or rather to set, sorry, to start certain new behaviors? Okay, I'm on my other point. Do I need to start certain new behaviors? And I like the word behavior because it is different from just action. I like action, but Behavior is when you have inculcated an action until it is part and parcel of you are of who you are. Okay, so we are not creatures of um, of um, of discipline. Discipline is good. We are supposed to be creatures of habit because a habit is second nature. Okay, 
you know, I remember the first time I, I walked from here all the way to a place called Kamango. That's 17 kilometers. So I've been trying every time I try to go a little bit far, you know, and I was so shattered. I mean, my legs felt, you know, like I would collapse. I mean, I danced 20 kilometers nonstop. You know, I just walked, you know, brisk walk. But then I realized, you know, uh, the problem, and I've said this a lot in church, the problem with exercise is that it is daily. That's a problem. The exercise would be very good if it was one off. Anybody would be a champion. But the problem with exercise is that it is daily. So the issue was, how can I do that daily? Okay? Okay? Or somewhere close to that daily. Okay? And I'm happy to note that uh, I've been able to maintain a resemblance of that. Okay? If I didn't know, it's not exactly 17, maybe it's 15 or 16, at least there about every day. So do I need to start certain new behaviors? Do I need to stop certain old behaviors? Okay? Or do I need to stop? Okay? What are the conversations that I allow in my mind? I think it's good to listen in to yourself when you're speaking. All of us. You know, sometimes we excuse things. We, 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 we are not hard enough to ourselves. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I said that you know, uh, wrongly. Um, we are not, um, we are not, we are not, we, we are too gentle with ourselves to an extent whereby we encourage certain misbehaviors and misdemeanors to continue. So listening to what you are saying, you know, what you're saying to yourself, self-talk, listening and, and, and say, no, I need to be more aware of what I'm saying to myself because apparently we believe what we say to ourselves, okay? So if I'm saying I'm, I'm unable to do something, okay why why is that so okay what about others who have done it how, how did they do it you know have have there been people who have been worse off you know than where i am and what i have and all that who have actually and what did they do so there are all these questions you have to ask and uh, i like what somebody once time said judge a man by the questions they ask not by the answers they give you can cram an answer and, and that's it but the questions somebody asks are insights into what is brewing within them. Simply put, and this is something you've had me say many times in church, when you play, you pay. Simply put, when you play, P-L-A-Y, when you play, you pay. It's just the law of life. What you sow, you reap. You play, you pay. Okay? You choose. And the Bible says it. You know, I lay before you. Choose. It's life, it's death, it's curse, it's blessing. We choose. And I'm finishing now. We choose where to be. We choose how to act. We choose what to say. So, so when, when somebody comes and says, uh, you know, uh, 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 I know I abused you, but, um, you know, it was just one of, no, 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 you choose what to say. We all have, we all can sit back and, you know, kind of reenact what you're going to say and ask ourselves, is it the right thing? Is there something I normally say, you know, um, um, the art of talking last, you know, as a habit, let others say what they're going to say and then just try and speak last and see, you would always say things which will be useful and needful. You choose what to do. You choose whom to be with. Okay. We choose what to concentrate on. We choose what to believe. We choose whom to go along, when to resist, whom to trust, whom to avoid, what to say to yourself and others, what to say to yourself and others. We choose. And finally, my final point, this is mine. The door of change is locked and opened from the inside. The door of change is locked and opened from the inside. It's a common statement, but it's a true statement. In a nutshell, what are we saying? And I've picked notes from uh, Dr. Phil and tried to develop them. I read the books many years ago and I scribbled these notes January 24th, 2009. And I thought at a time like this when there's a lot of people asking questions, 
There are people even who will be saying, but I thought God told me, you know. Question is, are you sure, really? Do you want to drag God into everything? Sometimes it is safer not to go there. Elections in a democratic environment, uh, you know, people mandates. Yes, not correctly. It's, you know, in a democracy, it's people who vote. It's people who vote. Sometimes you really want to be very careful when you drag God into something which eventually will be decided by people. So again, it, the mix there become quite uh, dicey. You want to be very careful. And if it is God who told you, clearly, the results will show. The results will show because God really cannot lie. That's what we know from scripture. So uh, I, I wish we, we went easy on some of these things that we're not saying God told me as a way to manipulate our way and manipulate people around, um, you know, and stuff like that. Because ultimately, it's people who are going to make these choices, you know. And a lot of people, you know, will have to really explain some of those statements because I've had people say, you know, God told me, God did this. And then right now, it's not really showing. It's not really showing. But I think it is good we look at this thing holistically like I've shared with you today. And um, I'm sure by doing this, we'll be able to take better, um, a better approach after the failure, after the loss, and we will lose. Of course, not, 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 not always through elections, not in all of us are interested in elections, you know, political elections that is, but we will lose. It's a business, it's a relationship, it's whatever, whatever it is. You know, we always go through moments of loss. Nobody is consistently successful. Sometimes you miss some things and you find yourself in a place which you didn't expect. And at that time, you are able to ask these questions in a very dispassionate and a very, you know, realistic way. So uh, please take that to heart and uh, maybe help somebody who maybe you know who is also contending uh, with uh, issues to do with uh, election laws. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Back to you, Paul.